Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to two simple adjustable current source circuit designs. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Before I get started, I'll just say, check me out on Patreon where you can find exclusive Forstronics content, including code from different projects, hardware design files from different projects, as well as extra video content. And that's what I'll have from this video, some extra video content on Patreon. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Forstronics YouTube channel. And if you like what you see here, please hit the thumbs up. All right, let's get started. Okay, what is a current source and what is a voltage source? We're gonna cover current sources, but it's important to know what a current source is. Probably you're familiar with what a voltage source is or a voltage regulator. And this maintains a constant voltage in the face of a changing load. So whether it's 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts, it's gonna maintain that constant voltage. And as the load changes, it allows the current to vary, but it keeps the voltage the same. Current source, it's the opposite. It maintains a set current value, and as the load changes, it allows the voltage to adjust. Applications for current sources could be a battery charger or it could be an LED driver, for instance. And by the way, I have a video on an LED driver that I did uh, not too long ago if you want to check that out. So in this video, we're going to look at two designs to put a current source together, and the designs can make it could be for an adjustable current source or a fixed current source. All right, let's look at our two designs. All right, for the first design, we're gonna take a linear voltage regulator and convert it into a current source. So there's a lot of linear voltage regulators out there and a linear voltage regulator takes an input voltage and turns it into a set output voltage. And the input voltage could be varying, the output voltage will be fixed, and the output voltage will have to be lower than the input voltage for a linear regulator. And for this video, there's a lot of linear voltage regulators on the market. Some of them are fixed, some of them are adjustable. We're gonna look, at, we're gonna use an adjustable one as an example. We're gonna use the LM317, which is a very common linear voltage regulator. And I'm showing a schematic of it for how you set its output voltage. So the LM317 is an adjustable linear voltage regulator. Its output voltage, once again, has to be lower than its input voltage, but it is, it can be set to different values. So it could be five volts, could be 10 volts, could be 18 volts, right? And the way it's set is by creating a resistor divider network between the output, the adjustment pin, and ground. And the idea here is the adjustment pin has to be 1.25 volts lower than the output. And I, I should basically say that the LM317 will regulate its output so that the adjustable pin is always 1.25 volts lower than the output voltage. The idea is you can set the output voltage by creating this voltage divider network between the adjustment pin and V out, right? So, so pretty simple. But we can also use this idea as in a current source rather than just a voltage source. So I grabbed this from the data sheet. Here's how you could make a simple set current source using the LM317. It actually requires less components than using it as a voltage source. So from this example from the data sheet, Let's say we wanted to create a constant current source that's 50 milliamps. Well, we can connect the adjust pin and the output pin on opposite sides of a resistor, right? So the output pin is always gonna be driven to be 1.25 volts higher than the adjustment pin. That's how the LM317 was designed. And if we know that, we know that the resistor will always have 1.25 volts across it. Well, if that's the case, if we have a 25 ohm resistor, we can see that's 50 milliamps. So we created a 50 milliamp current source. Now in this, this diagram, we can see they have a battery connected to it. So you could use this as a battery charger. But if we just had a varying resist, resistance load, the current's gonna maintain the same because the LM17, the LM317 is regulating its voltage across that output resistance for a 1.25 volt difference between adjust and output. So, it's, so the voltage is free to vary across the load, but the current through the series path is always gonna be the same. So this is great. This is a set current value current source. Well, how can we make this adjustable? So here's a setup where we can use the LM317 a little bit like we just saw, but make it an adjustable current source. Now, of course, the last current source we showed you, we could make it adjustable by replacing the fixed resistor with a potentiometer. So you could do that but here's a way to make it more of an automated adjustable current source. 
So once again, we have the current sense resistor connected across the output, but instead of having the load at the output, we have the load at the input or between the input and the ultimate power supply, VCC. And then notice we have the adjustable pin connected to an analog control voltage. So if we vary this analog control voltage, we can change the set voltage drop across the current sense resistor. And since the current sense resistor is connected to ground, we can then control the current through the current sense resistor. And since the load is in the series path with the current sense resistor, we can control the current through the load. So that's how this circuit works. But just to make it clear, let's look at an example of how we might implement it. Okay, let's say that we have a control voltage that can go from zero to 10 volts. And let's say that VCC is 24 volts. And let's say, just like in our previous example, we want a max current, set current, of 50 milliamps, so that when the control voltage is 10 volts, we want 50 milliamps thrown through the circuit. And then if the control voltage is less than 10 volts, we want that set current to be lower than 50 milliamps with a linear relationship between the control voltage. Okay, so first thing we can do is we can calculate what is the output voltage of the LM317 when the control voltage is 10 volts. Well, as we mentioned earlier, and, and as the data sheets specifies, that the LM317 maintains a 1.25 higher voltage than what's at the adjustment pin. So if we have 10 volts at the adjustment pin, that means we'll have 11.25 volts at the output or dropped across our current sense resistor. So this allows us to calculate what value resistor we want to have for our current sense resistor. So we would take 11.25 volts, we divide it by 50 milliamps, which is what we want to have at our max control voltage, and we can see we get 225 ohms. Now remember, we don't want to just use a standard resistor for this. We might, we might have higher power handling needs, so I kind of show a power handling uh, equation. If we know the max voltage is going to be 11.25 volts dropped across that resistor, and we know we are going to have a max of 50 milliamps flowing through it, we can use that to calculate the power. Now I also add a 1.5 multiplier because we don't want our power handling to be right at the limit. We want a little margin, right? So we get about 850 milliwatts. Now another thing I want to point out is there's actually a type of resistor out there, a class of resistors called current sense resistors. And that class of current sense resistors is meant to be used for current sources. So current sense resistors typically have a pretty accurate resistance value, and also they're typically made to handle a little heat. So if you know your physics, when you heat up a material, its resistance, electrical resistance, changes. Right? So a current sense resistor is meant to try to keep a stable resistance in the face of varying heat conditions. Okay, so that's a little bit about the current sense resistor. Now keep in mind that since we have this voltage reference, when the control voltage is zero volts, we're not gonna have zero current flowing through our circuit because we're gonna have that 1.25 voltage at the output. So if we divide that by the current sense resistor value, we know that at zero volts control, we're still gonna have about 5.6 milliamps of current flowing through our series path or flowing through the load. We can also look at what is the max load value from a resistance standpoint that this circuit can handle and still put out 50 milliamps. Well, this is dependent on VCC and the voltage drops through the rest of the series path. So VCC is 24 volts. And if you look at the LM317 data sheet, it says that the LM317 is gonna drop at least three volts. In real life, it's actually lower than three volts, but we'll say that it's gonna be three volts. And then we know that the max voltage drop across our current sense resistor is 11.25 volts. So the, the voltage drop through a series pass has to equal the source of voltage, right? So if we subtract our voltage drops from our power supply, 24 volts, we get what the max voltage across the load can be, right? So then if we divide that by the max current, 50 milliamps, we get 195 ohms. That means this circuit can serve as a current source at the max of 50 milliamps for loads that are 195 ohms or less. If the load is higher, that means we will not get 50 milliamps. And as I mentioned, one of the downsides of this circuit is we can't quite go to zero amps, right? So at, 
at zero volts control voltage, we're still gonna get a little amps flowing. Now you could sort of deal with that if you added some type of voltage detector circuit, which I, I talk about in some of my other videos, or some type of MOSFET that you use as a switch to shut off the current flow. And you probably have to use the analog voltage to control that MOSFET or bias it on and off. All right, let's look at a demo with this circuit in action. Okay, here I grab some parts from Labstock to quickly mock up this example circuit. So the through-hole component is the LM317. And then I had some resistors from some other project soldered together that equal about 56 ohms. So this is our load. And connected to our load, we have our power source, which I have it set for 24 volts. And then the black line is just connected to ground. So that's our power supply, that's VCC. This other resistor, this smaller one, is meant to be our sense resistor. Now it's not an actual sense resistor, it's just a low cost resistor I got from Labstock. So it's a 100 ohm resistor, but I measured it with my DMM and it's only really about 98 ohms. So it doesn't have a great tolerance, but so keep in mind it's about 98 ohms. This yellow and green wire connected to our control voltage. So this is our zero to 10 volt control voltage. So I have this set up a lot like the example I showed you, but our sense resistor is a little bit of a different value. So when I start playing the demo video, we're gonna zoom up and look at our control voltage, which is coming from a function generator. So that's set for 10 volts. So I have that on. So right now the control voltage is set for 10 volts. Now I have a power supply and I have a smart power supply that can measure its output current. So we can see what the current is flowing through our series path. I don't have the power supply on yet, but with a 100 ohm or actually a 98 ohm resistor, and we know we're gonna have 11.25 volts because we have a 10 volt control signal with our 1.25 reference signal, we should get about 115 milliamps flowing at, at our max setting. So I'm gonna turn the power supply on and there we go. We can see about 115 amps flowing through our circuit which is what we expect, which is what we have it set for. So now I'm gonna go up and, oh, I'm actually gonna show you, notice the current went up a little. The reason the current went up a little is because as the current's flowing through the circuit and especially the sense resistor, the sense resistor is heating up. And you can see that changes its resistance so you can see the, the amperage changes. So this is important to note because if you wanna have an act, accurate current value, you wanna buy a sense resistor that's not gonna heat up too much. And if it does heat up too much, you want some active cooling to lower the temperature so you get that constant current. Another thing you could do is you buy a sense resistor that has a much higher power handling spec than the power handling of your circuit. That way the heat rise is minimal. So th this is a good way to show the effect of temperature on the set current value. Okay, now as I go on with the video, I'm gonna change the control voltage. So I'm lowering it to five volts, and you can see I lowered it to five volts, and as we can see, our current flow is reduced to basically a five volt control signal, because now we have about what? We have about 6.25 volts across the resistor. So if we keep going, I'm actually gonna measure the voltage across the resistor now. So I'm gonna measure that voltage drop across the resistor, and there it is. So we reduced our control signal to five volts and with the reference voltage, we're gonna get 6.25 volts dropped across our sense resistor, essentially lowering the current. So that's our demo. Now in our demo, I didn't change the value of the load, but if we would have changed the value of the load, we still would have gotten this voltage drop across our sense resistor. So therefore we still would have got a constant current. Okay, let's look at our second example current source circuit. So for this circuit, we're gonna combine a MOSFET, an op amp, and a sense resistor, as well as some type of voltage control source. Now I'll mention this circuit diagram is actually a circuit diagram I took from a video I did years ago on creating a DC electronic load. So if you're interested in that video, you can, uh, I'll put a link to it in the video description, but the idea is we can use that same circuit to create a current source. So in this circuit, we have our power supply or VCC at the top. And through our series path, we have our load that could be variable. We have a MOSFET and our MOSFET's gonna act like a variable resistor to control current flow through this series path. 
And then we also have our sense resistor, which creates a voltage drop that tells us what the current flow through the sense resistor is. And so what happens is we use this op amp. And so what happens is an op amp will try to regulate its output so that its output is a difference between its two input voltages. And so on the non-inverting input of the op amp, that's where our control voltage source is connected. And then on the inverting side of our op amp, we have the voltage drop across the sense resistor. So the way this circuit works is the op amp will drive the gate of the MOSFET to try and make the voltage drop across the sense resistor equal to the voltage on the input of the non-inverting. So that would be the, our control voltage, right? So if we have a control voltage of 10 volts, the op amp is gonna to try to drive that MOSFET's gate so that the MOSFET creates a voltage drop of 10 volts across the sense resistor. And so the MOSFET essentially, once again, is acting like a variable resistor. So as an example, if we had a 10 ohm sense resistor and we had a 10 volt control signal, we get about one amp flowing through our load and through the MOSFET and through the sense resistor. A lot of what I talked about in the last example circuit is true here as far as accuracy or how to get a higher current or how to handle higher resistive loads. And one thing I should point out is this circuit that you're looking at is actually very close to how the internal architecture of a linear voltage regulator. So both these circuits are actually very similar on how they're used as a current source. Okay, that's it for two simple adjustable current source circuit designs. If you have any questions from this video, use the comment section. If you have anything to add that, or maybe I missed something, please use the comment section as well. Thank you for watching.